profile. Until now, we can tolerate a line to be straight, we can tolerate a surface to be flat, we can tolerate a circle to be circular, and we can tolerate a cylinder to be cylindrical. But what if the surface that we would like to tolerate is not a line or a cylinder or something of these tolerances that we mentioned? What if it looks like this, for example? How do we tolerate this? In that case, we have to use profile tolerances. If we want to tolerate a line on the surface, we will use the line profile, which looks like this. If we want to tolerate a surface, then we have to use a surface profile, which looks like this. The same as the line profile, but the flipped U sign is closed. And the difference between these two is just like the difference between the straightness and flatness, or circularity and cylindricity. One is tolerating only a line, and one is tolerating the whole surface. So, let's have a look at the line tolerance, or the profile of a line tolerance. What this says is that our measured line has to lie between two lines. They're not straight lines. The distance between them at any point is 0.1. It may be better to imagine a circle here with a diameter value of the tolerance which is 0.1. So, you have your ideal profile. At any point, you can draw a circle with a diameter of 0.1 and the tangents for these circles draw the tolerant zone limits for the profile of the line. And the measured profile has to lie between your tolerant zone. So this was the profile of the line. The profile of the surface is just the same, but it's not only the tolerance between two ideal profiles, but it's between two surfaces. So if the part looks like this in 3D, the profile tolerance will mean that there are two surfaces that extend along the whole surface and any point on the true surface should lie between these two parallel surfaces. It's not a new concept. We know this already from cylindricity, but there's something different here than the other form tolerances that we discussed, like the straightness, flatness, cylindricity or circularity, is that this perfect ideal element is not defined. If you say this line should be a straight line, use the straightness tolerance for some line, then everybody knows what a straight line means. If you use the flatness, everybody knows what a flat surface means. It just means that the difference in height between any point on the surface is zero. This is the ideal flat surface. But if you have a surface with a profile that is not flat or cylindrical, it is not a defined surface that is agreed upon, then you will need to define this ideal surface which means you have to give it dimensions. But these dimensions are called basic dimensions. So you're saying this part of the surface has a diameter or radius. Let's use radius sign of 20, for example. And here, let's use another radius of 10. And here, there is a length of 30 and so on. But you have to put these dimensions in a box like this one. What you are saying with these boxes is that these dimensions are basic dimensions. They are theoretically ideal and theoretically perfect dimensions. They do not have tolerances because the tolerances will be added later using the feature control frame, using the line profile tolerance. You cannot just leave it at 30, because in this case, it might have the general tolerance of the drawing or for example, plus minus 0.1. If you do not add the box, it means you're dimensioning the real feature. But by adding the box, it means you are dimensioning a theoretically ideal shape of the feature. So the first step is that you describe your perfect profile using these basic dimensions. And then you add the tolerance using the feature control frame, the 0.1 in this case, for example. You can also refer your CAD model instead of defining the basic dimensions of the drawing because the CAD model also describes the ideal shape. But then you have to send this model to everybody who will need it afterwards. 
If you're sure that everybody who will need the drawing will get access to the CAD model, if you're going to send it to the measurement technician and you send it to the manufacturing, then in this case, you can leave the surface undefined and just use the text that says the ideal shape can be taken from the 3D model. This is a good trick if the shape is too complicated to define using drawing dimensions. For example, it is a complicated surface shape. But if it is feasible to dimension on the drawing, avoid this as much as possible, because not everybody who will have the drawing in their hand will have access to the CAD model. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a like and drop a comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts or questions. And if you're into leveling up your skills with expert-led content, hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. For full courses, downloadable assignments, and certifications, head over to excitify.com. Start learning smarter today.